We're on. Hello, everybody. Welcome. This is our first annual summer conference faculty preview. And we're coming up on our 41st annual summer conference starting July 6th at Muhlenberg College in Pennsylvania. And you cannot believe the faculty lineup that is not only going to be at the summer conference, but is actually here on Zoom. And they're going to talk to you tonight. And you're going to recognize many of these faces. You're going to want to know all of these women. You're going to want to experience what they're offering in their courses. We're so glad you're here. So glad you joined us. We're so excited about the summer conference. We couldn't wait to tell you about it. Now, as you know, I'm Kelly Dumar, and I'm on the board. I'm also going to be one of the summer instructors. And we've got Marge Hahn, who is our wonderful creative director, organizer. She's also here on the call, obviously, directing things, all the machinations behind the scene and in front of it. Marge Hahn is also one of our summer instructors. And you're going to want to hear from her what she's teaching. And we want your questions. Now, after each one of us gets to give a little blurb, just like we do live, Friday night at the opening of every one of our summer conferences, we stand up and, and tell you, our participants, what we're here to teach and why you would want to attend our course. And we're going to do that. We're going to sell our courses to you tonight on this call, let you know why our summer, our International Women's Writing Guild Summer Conference is the one we think you are going to want to be at. We're going to get to all of our unique features. We're gonna give you a taste of our community and you're gonna have a chance to ask any questions that you need or want specifically to any one of our instructors um, or to Marge or myself, um, our conference coordinator. You probably know her or you've heard of her or heard from her, Dixie King. She will probably jump on the call. She's traveling and will maybe jump on the call to answer any questions that Marge or I cannot answer. Um, but uh, you're going to get to put your questions in the Q&A. Now, I want to tell you that welcome to Zoom. It is the most fabulous video conferencing software, and it's very easy to use. And what, we, what I want to draw your attention to is this little box on the bottom of your screen. On the far left, it says mute with a little green icon flashing and then um, or not and then on the right it says something else like leave meeting but there's a list of a band of icons on the bottom Q&A is right smack in the middle probably that is what you're going to press when you want to ask a question we're going to actually see your questions accumulate in the queue and we will get a chance to ask after all of our instructors have a chance to introduce themselves we will ask your questions but there's another fabulous feature we want to connect with you in our chat room. So there's also a little icon, a couple over from the Q&A, you'll see it says chat. That's your chance right now to tell us who you are. Where are you joining the call from? Why are you here? Uh, and then everyone will see in the chat room who you are, that you're saying hello. You can get answers to, uh, from those of us in the chat room. and. It's just kind of like a side conversation that we can all have um, while uh, people like me are, are talking a lot. Now, I'm not going to talk too much more. What I want to do right now is share screen because I want you to see where exactly you can get information about our, our conference on the website. And it is under events. And it's under our in-person events. So when we're done with this call, with this meeting, you can go right here to our website at iwwg.org and find out more information, follow up on things that uh, we've told you in the call, tells you that starts on July 6th. We have a three-day and a six-day conference plan. And that also lists who all our faculty and instructors are. So I just wanted you to see that you can access all of that information right on our website. Now, I'm going to stop share.
and I'm going to come back. Is Jan Phillips on the call yet by any chance? Not yet. Okay. Um, All right. Jan Phillips, also one of our faculty members for many years, is uh, our co-executive director of the International Women's Writing Guild. And when she comes on, I know she will want to say a few words to you in addition to that of, about her own course. Uh, Marge, what, if anything, have I forgotten that's really essential to cover right now? I just really want to thank all our instructors for coming on a Sunday night all across the country. We're in three or four different time zones, as you may be as well. What have I forgotten? Anything before we start hearing from our panelists? No, Kelly, I don't think you've forgotten anything. And because I've been multitasking, I may repeat something you already said, which is that folks can practice the chat room by telling us where they're where they're logging in from. Did you already say that? I did. Hi, Vicki oh, from Columbus, Ohio. Excellent. Okay. And just make sure, folks, that you, you choose all panelists and attendees. And Deb from Long Island, welcome. Also, what you might do, we'd love to know if you were going to consider being a first-time attendee, like you've never been to our conference, say that in our chat room, because there are probably people on the call and in the chat room who've been before, and they might be traveling in your direction, they might know what the best bus to take for transportation, or what the rooms are like, and what you need to bring. Before March, we have to remember this, before the end of the call, you and me, yeah. you've got to remember to remind people what they need to bring to Muhlenberg um, to be really comfortable in their dorms, and how fun it is to um, kind of step back in time and, and stay in, in one of the college dorms and how to find a roommate and all of those good things. Okay. So, so did you mean red and white wine? What? Did you mean red and white wine? Yes, yes. They might want to know of the wine situation. And I think you will be the expert to bring them in on the, the wine situation, the Red Door Lounge. The I Red mean, Door Lounge. We have this amazing place at Muhlenberg called the Red Door Lounge. And it's where we gather um, after hours in the evening and people have uh, beautiful hors d'oeuvres, they have snacks, they have wine, we have entertainment. It's, it's a very social occasion. Excellent. And Kelly, I'm going to, uh, I'm noticing the time and we have three of our yep. teachers, four of them who need to leave uh, in the next 15 to 30 minutes. So I'm gonna, if you don't mind, get started on folks introducing their courses. Let me answer first, Michelle Handworker, we're not gonna run out of private rooms. So folks, just to clarify, there are single rooms, four to a quad. It's private for you, but you share a bath, share a kitchenette, share a living area. There's private rooms with their own bath. That's called private room, private bath. It's a little more expensive, uh, not much more. And um, there's also two beds in one room with a shared bath, which may be a way to have privacy. Um, and that's the same price as if you're getting a single and a quad. So I want to remind you, please, to put any questions like that in the Q&A, because uh, if you put them in the chat room, I'm going to lose track of them. They scroll up. Okay, cool. So, folks, let me introduce you Susie Banks Baum, who is... Uh, accessing the webinar from outside Lincoln Center. Susie Banks Baum, go ahead and unmute yourself and tell us about your course, the title, what people can expect. Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm, I'm here, and I really hope no alarms or fires, fire engines go by. So, um, yeah, I am Susie Banks Baum. I live in the Berkshires up in Western Mass. Um, and... Uh, I was all ready for this, and now I'm so excited to see everyone. It makes me kind of forget. I think the thing I really want you to know about IWWG, before I describe my class, is that we are real women, real writers, and real people who gather and love to be in community while we work. So um, I am one of the mixed media teachers. I'm teaching an illustrated pages class with... Um, if you all have any questions, several people on this call have taken my class before, so they will be able to answer you pretty well. Um, but Illustrated Pages really is an opportunity to use the, your journal, your personal work, and the writing that you do during the conference to move that from the page and onto a water, piece of watercolor paper or Bristol paper where we're going to play with new tools this year like uh, alcohol inks and radiant color, concentrated watercolors, and just 
play, really. My sessions are about play. We always do physical stuff. We always do a centering and we share. So my sessions are at the end of the day when you need to digest and connect. And that's what I'm all about. So much love. You can always uh, look up my website and learn more about me there. And I just really warmly welcome you to the Guild and our summer conference. Susie, and everything else. The, yeah. What's your website? SusieBanksBaum.com. SusieBanksBaum.com. I got it. All right. All right. All right. Much love, everybody. I'm going to unmute. Thank Hi, you. Susie. Thanks. Folks, so if you haven't noticed, Kelly and I are uh, putting remarks from your faculty, their websites, et cetera, in the chat room. So just keep checking that out. Thanks, Susie Banks Baum. Ariel Silver, tell us what you're up to. Hi, everybody. I am very happy to be coming back to the conference for my second time. Um, really happy to be on this conference call today with you guys. Um, and I'm talking to you from sunny Los Angeles, California, um, middle of the afternoon here. I'm teaching a workshop this summer called Feasting on Form, which is inspired by the menu as well as the mess of our lives. Uh, we will dig through our own food-inspired, story-filled pantries and using ingredients like flour that can be made into both croissants or croutons, we're gonna try out different forms. Uh, we're gonna read some essays um, and, and talk about the stories and also create our own. Um, and this is inspired by both the, the sensory experience of food and the memories of feasts and famines in our own lives, as well as the actual forms of the food. So uh, re essays that have been, that have borrowed forms like recipes and menus and grocery lists and inventory of the stuff in the cupboard. Um, that's what we'll be doing in this workshop. I think it will be tasty. Um, and it's open to, uh, writers of any level. Um, personally, I, I write in creative nonfiction and poetry, and I would say that um, I think there's room for fiction writers as well if you want to use that, but really um, I envision it as drawing from our own experience. I think there's room there though for inventive experience. Um, and it's, um, I, I don't know, we'll just be digging into memory, senses, food, exploring the cravings that we feed, the appetites we can't deny, and the hungers that consume us. So I hope to see you there. And either way, I'll see you in Allentown this summer. Wow, thank you, Ariel. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, um, I have to split a couple of minutes uh, in a couple of minutes from here, I'm off to a storytelling event here in LA. Um, but you can reach me at um, Ariel at arielsilver.com. And that's my website, arielsilver.com. That's two L's and an E. Thank you. Thanks, Marge. Thanks, Ariel. Have fun at your event. Thank you. Linda Bergman, you're on. Linda, you got to unmute yourself. So folks, when I introduce you, just know that I've Hello. muted you. There you go. Hey, Linda. Hey, guys. Hi, I'm Linda Bergman. I write screenplays, and I was just listening to Ariel Silver and wondering if her class was a movie. It sure sounds like it, and I'll be there. Um, screenplays are my passion. I just finished the 25th screenplay. I've been paid to write. Uh, I live and breathe screenplays, but you don't have to be a screenwriter to come to my class. You have to be interested in good story. You have to want to know uh, what beginning, middle, and end means in a very, very short time in a very disciplined writing screenplay. Uh, most of my clients, a lot of my students are novelists or memoirists, and they bring 400 pages, and we figure out how to cut it to 100. Not always satisfying, but writing for the screen is a real art, and it can be a lot of fun. I invite you to join me to learn the craft, the nuts and bolts. Uh, this year I'm doing something different. I'm teaching how to write a movie from its scene. So come over, come see me. I think I'm in the afternoon sometime at a time I'm not familiar with or I would be telling you that. And if you have any screenplay questions, be, uh, you can find me on Linda Bergman, So You Think Your Life's a Movie on Facebook.
Good to see you all. I love you all. I'm so happy to be a part of this group. Thanks, Linda. And I want to say I've taken most of our teachers courses and I could give a plug for everybody's class, but I will say that Linda's class really enhanced how I even watch movies. I mean, it's just, just really love that class for many reasons. Thank you so much, Linda. You have fun at your event tonight. Yeah. Going to see, going to the theater. Yeah. Right on. Bye, Linda. Bye. Kelly, I wonder if now is a good time to share the screen of our daily schedule so folks can get a sense of where, where our teachers are um, lined up for the day. This is the daily schedule, folks. In case you haven't been to our conference before, it's something like a buffet. So the daily schedule, which is posted at the summer conference webpage, um, means every day. This is what Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday looks like. We have one course by Pamela Varconi that's only a three-day, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, but everyone else's is a, uh, a six-day, um, although Myra, when we hear from you, we'll, we'll learn that your class is not a six-day this year, um, but most everyone's is a six-day, and each class session is 75 minutes, and most of our instructors design their class so that each 75 minute session is its own entity. We encourage you to go in and out of the classes. Yes, there's probably some cumulative knowledge, um, but mostly we invite you to sample. Um, I'm someone who likes to show up on Saturday and stay the whole way um, and then try to catch someone the following year, but we encourage you to sample. If you don't enjoy a class or don't feel like it's the right one for you in that moment, we invite you to to leave even if it's 10 minutes in. We're really fair that way. Um, Kelly, I'm, I'm gonna see what the Q&A question is while you're pulling that. There it is. Oh, hey, Mary Lou Strezneski from PA. Mary Lou, use the chat room for the chatty chat and reserve this Q&A for um, questions for uh, the teachers. Yeah because I want everyone in the chat room to see your hello. Um, only, the, only I and Kelly can see the, the Q&A uh, stuff. Um, so Kelly, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna see, is the share screen gonna, the, the, the schedule gonna be up? It was just up. Should I move on to Maureen? Maureen? Maureen Murdoch, will you tell us what you're doing this uh, July 6th through 13? <laughs> sure. Um, hi, everybody. It's great to see everyone. Anya, it's great to have you back. It's been several years. <laughs> so, hi. Um, I'm teaching the advanced seminar in memoir. Uh, which means that it's actually limited to 12 uh, registrants. Um, what we'll do over the six days is I will, uh, we'll look at two people's memoirs each day. The, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm stuttering is because I'm looking at myself and my voice and my sound, my mouth don't match. So it's a little, uh, little difficult. Anyway, in the advanced memoir, we're going to look at narrative voice. We're going to look at um, creating uh, sensory scenes. We're going to look at theme. We're going to look at structure. And uh, what I've asked is for those who are interested in taking this course that you contact Dixie and in your subject line put uh, advanced seminar and memoir and send her 10 pages that um, she's going to look at and then send to me. The first day of the workshop, I'm going to ask each of the 12 people who are going to be taking the advanced memoir to bring a synopsis of their work, just a one-page synopsis answering questions like, uh, what are the issues you're addressing? What's the theme of your memoir? 
what questions are you asking yourself? So um, if you're interested in taking the advanced memoir, it's going to be in the afternoon from 2.30 to 3.45. Again, it's limited to 12 memoir writers. You don't have to be writing a full-length memoir. You can be writing short memoir pieces, but we're limiting it to 10 pages. Um, so if you're interested, please email Dixie and um, tell her you're interested and then she'll tell you what to do. I think there's an extra $50 registration fee. So I look forward to seeing you in Pennsylvania in July. I'm going to sign off now from Carpinteria, California where we still have mudslides and broken roads, but we're hanging in there. Thanks, Maureen. I was waiting for your lips to stop moving. <laughs> Folks, Maureen is worth that extra $50, I'll tell you. And uh, if any of, all of that information uh, was just put in the chat room, including Dixie's email. But if you go to iwwg.org slash summer hyphen conference, all this information is there. There are printable, downloadable PDFs below the main information. There's a PDF of the daily schedule. There's a PDF of uh, all the workshop blurbs and workshop presenter bios. Any special notes or guidelines or requests, advanced stuff, all of that is in that document. There's also travel options. A travel option document is at that website. Um, Okie dokes. Uh, so there is a deadline for submitting your um, 10 pages of memoir to be considered for Maureen's advanced seminar. I apologize, I don't have it off the top of my head, but it's probably the end of May. It's uh, June 1st, Marge. I'm June sorry, 1st. I forgot to say that. Yep. That's no problem, Maureen. I, we got you. So uh, now I'm going to kind of go randomly because everyone else. Uh, oh, Janice. Jan Gary, you're next. Unmute right. yourself, Jan. There you go. Okay, here I am. Well, guys, I am so excited to be here with these wonderful teachers who, I mean, one of the things about teaching there is you want to take all of the courses and be with everyone because they're such extraordinary writers and teachers. Um, and I had this whole thing written out, but I really don't want to do that. I want to try to just tell you about my experience of being at the conference and what I'll be working with this time. I am a memoir writer and a nonfiction essayist, so um, yeah, you can't make stuff up with me, but we can uh, can really work very deeply with what is. And um, and my workshop is called Our Bodies Ourselves, Unlocking the Stories Held in Our Bodies. A couple of months ago, I was at the AWP conference, which is this gigantic writing conference annually, about 12,000 writers and writing programs, on a panel that the IWG she sponsored as with Lisa and Ariel and Dixie was on it as well. And we were talking about the, the name of it was flesh and blood, um, women writing women's bodies. And so this is kind of a continuation of that. Um, we got such incredible response because women, women's re our relationship to our bodies is very complicated. And a lot of, um, we carry a lot of shame, we carry a lot of projection, we carry a lot of what we should and shouldn't. And the very um, wonderful and celebratory and even messy stuff about being a woman, woman, we're just not supposed to talk about. This is the chance to talk about it and to really find out a lot about ourselves from the way we relate to our body. So um, I know we have to be kind of quick here. Um, what really struck me in putting this together is the way in which men are allowed to talk about their bodies so affectionately, so lightly, so celebratorily. I mean, 
If you know a guy, you know they have a million words for their penises, and it's all kind of fun. Um, they have belching contests and farting contests. Um, guys are so loose and connected to their animal selves, we are cut off from it as women. I just am writing a story right now where um, <clears throat> tracing how that happens to us as children and as girls, that we are not just kids. We become very aware of being girls and what we can and cannot do. So um, each day we will pick another body part that we'll be working on. Um, so you could come to one, you could come to them all, um, working with things like hair, skin, bellies, breasts, um, body image, weight, teeth, whatever you really need to bring to the table about yourself. And maybe a um, challenge to really write about the things about your body that you are most hold shame or charge for you because this is the way the writing is a way of taking back our ownership of our body and that's what we'll be doing so i guarantee you you will not be you will write and write and not want to stop writing about your body um, we'll have fun with it we'll have a really deep connection to each other like we always do at this conference i belonged to the IWG years ago and did not for a while. And Susan Tybergian encouraged me to come back. And so this will be my third year back to the conference. And I have to tell you, there is no other conference like this one. When women come together and write deeply and celebrate each other, some, some, the magic really does happen. So. Um, I hope to see you in my workshop. I hope to see you at the conference. And uh, if you haven't ever been, please do come. I know you'll have a, a very worthwhile time. Jan, thanks so much. Um, yeah, folks, I want to add to that, that all the options are available. There are people asking questions about are certain rooms available. Nothing is closed out. Uh, nothing needs to be signed up ahead of time other than the advanced seminars. In fact, Maureen, there's a question about whether someone who's registered for the long weekend can attend your full conference, conference advanced event. seminar. Yeah, I just answered that in the <clears throat> Q&A. <clears throat> it's fine with me, but I think she would have to check with Dixie because it would still, uh, she'd still be required to register, you know, with the $50 fee. Right, that's my guess too. So Michelle, I know that was your question and I will ask Dixie and I will get back to you, okay? Okay, but it's fine yeah. with me. Gotcha. Okay. My, my guess, Michelle, is that if Maureen gets in excess of 12 registrants and 12 plus are full conference attendees, uh, I mean, I guess I'm just not sure what the factors will be in deciding limiting to 12, so not sure but I'll get back to you. So thanks, Jan. Thanks, more. Marge, you're oh, muted. I'm muted. What did I just say? Uh. Michelle, I'll get back to you about Dixie's question, and I am calling on Paula Chaffee Scardamalia. See, I could read your lips on that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has a name like that, right? <laughs> it just goes on forever. <laughs> oh, uh, it's good to be here with everybody. This is so fun seeing all these faces and hi to people I haven't seen in a while and so forth. So um, I don't know uh, what time of day I'm teaching at because I'm not looking at the schedule, but it's so interesting for me to be teaching this summer because usually I'm the one teaching the crazy stuff like, you know, dreams and, and uh, world building and other kinds of fun stuff. But this year I am teaching the nitty gritty um, of how to write query letters, uh, synopses, uh, book proposals, first pages, the things you need, to, uh, your pitch, your hook, the things you need to have to sell your writing. 
Um, we love writing. We get into it here at this conference. Everybody's very supportive and stuff. But what do you do with it after you go home? Are you going to shove it into a drawer or are you going to try to give it birth and put it out in the world? So I'm going to help you uh, learn how to structure your queries, how to approach agents and editors so that you have some level of confidence when you attend other writers' conferences where you can actually pitch in person. And if you can't pitch in person, how to structure a query letter so that you hook the editor or agent's attention, how to develop a synopsis for your fiction, how to write a, no a book proposal for your nonfiction, because with the exception of memoir, you don't write your book until the, a the agent or editor has taken it on. And so the book proposal is what you write instead. So I'll be covering all those things um, one day after another. And uh, I look forward to having all of you there. Thank you, Paula Chafee Scardamalia. <laughs> Folks, uh, again, I'm going to remind you that if you have any questions for any of our teachers as they're finishing up their blurb, you can put in the Q&A and we'll try to catch them before they get off the call because some of them have to leave. In fact, Dorothy Randall Gray, I understand you got somewhere to go. So I'm going to call you on the call, okay, Dorothy? Unmute yourself. Paul, I'm going to mute you. Dorothy? There you are. I, I'll unmute you, Dorothy. Okay, okay. hi. Hey. I, am, I am at the end of our Women Writers and Artists Matrix Conference at Skidmore College. I am dog tired, and I just want to make sure I connect with everybody. Before I left, hi folks. I'm excited about coming to our next and my 28th conference at the Guild. So I'm one of those veterans. Hi, Deborah Staunton. <laughs> so anyway, I want to talk to you briefly about um, my workshop. Um, it's called, what is it called? <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> It's about writing uh, succulent, um, writing succulently, r women writing beyond boundaries. And it is a multi-genre, um, really exciting, passionate, sensuous, fabulous workshop that will help you dispel the myths of writer's block, will help you put the words that sizzle in your heart and soul down on the paper, and to add to the succulents of the workshop, there will be chocolate at each session so that we can all taste the succulent sentences that we create. We'll be looking at the writings of Audre Lorde. We'll be looking at the writings of Beyonce, Aretha Franklin. We'll be looking at the concept of Wabi Sabi. We'll be using music and meditation. And also, I want to tell you, um, this is a workshop that I recently created, and I really love it. I just did it here in Saratoga Springs, and it was absolutely magical and powerful. I'd like to invite you all to come and experience what it's like to no longer have to worry about the myth, the myth of writer's block. No longer have to worry about what to write. There will always be inspirations to write about and things that you can use for stories, for poems. We'll use all kinds of inspiration. And um, so just come, write, eat chocolate, write poetry, fiction, nonfiction, it's all good. I have lots and lots of handouts to give you, music to share with you, and really good writing. So um, that's it. I'm, I'm out. I'm jet lagged because I'm on the East Coast. <laughs> and, um, Thank you, Marge. Okay. Thanks, Dorothy. That was Dorothy Randall Gray, everybody. Oh, I'm me. I'm going to get some sleep now. Okay. All right. Bye. Nighty nights. Peace out. Okay. okay. Myra Shapiro, you ready to tell us what? Now, I don't hear you. Marge, no. you were unmuted. You were yeah. muted. Yeah. It's probably a good thing, Myra. You're on. Never, never, never. Marge, thank you for all you do. The community that we create at the Guild and have for years is in good part 
this ongoing, I don't desire that we all have to um, what to to make art, to make writing matter in our lives, and the uh, class uh, that I'm going to teach this year is simply called reading and writing poems. Very simple, except that poetry is not one of the major uh, genres at the uh, conference. There are many prose workshops and uh, as you know Marge because you're a poet as well there is something very special about poetry for me it is the line I love that we have something that allows us to stay in the present when you read a poem each line each line can give you a world Nobody has to put you to go forward. Going backwards is where the line comes from and the future, but the line. So I am in love with poetry uh, for many reasons. Also because I think we can embody, embody um, the writing through poetry because it allows us to be present and slow. I love being slow. And so anyone who wants to join me in uh, the, I will be there this year, not for the six days, but teaching for four. And uh, each day we'll do something that engages our presence and our senses. And there'll be one poem that will, uh, I'm not sure about it. I was thinking about, a Robert Frost poem that starts, the way a crow shook down on me, the dust of snow from a hemlock tree. And read those are the first lines. The reason I was thinking about that poem is because I, I want to, I guess, emphasize the way we, we say something that we feel, that we taste, that we smell, that we hear. And uh, there will be exercises each day to distinguish each day. And um, reading that we do, handouts each day to distinguish that day. Um, so if uh, you're interested in poems, uh, if you're interested in the genre that can include prose, but that loves the line as well, then I'd say, come to the class, come, certainly come to the guild, come to the conference, because it is, as everyone has said, a community like no other. Um, is there anything else, anything I've left out? No, that was perfect, Myra, thanks so much. Good. Thank Good. you. You're welcome. That was Myra Shapiro, folks, Myra Shapiro. And I, I want to uh, remind all of you, if you would please use the Q&A to limit your questions to those that arise around the workshops and our workshop instructors and the summer conference. We recognize that not all of you are going to attend the summer conference. We certainly hope you will one day. So this is a way to give you a sense of our community and what we offer if you should come another time or come to even a regional a one day or two day regional it's the same thing we're the same we're the same body of it's remarkable that you can get this experience in a one day conference that you can get in a seven day that's been my experience so some of you are asking general writing related questions in the q a and i invite you to save those for one of our upcoming instructional webinars, okay? Maybe even ask it in our Facebook uh, IWWG members room. Maybe some of your sisters can answer your questions there if you need answers now, sooner than later. Cool. Hey, Marge, yeah. um, do you want, when do you want to tell about your class? I, I guess I'll do that now because, uh, because um, cause you asked me to. I, I am 
stalling a little bit because my class is a little bit um, TBD to be determined. Here's why. I'm teaching, uh, I am scheduled to teach an advanced poetry seminar at the same time that Linda Leedy Schneider is doing a poetry class. And that's, um, we don't have a lot of poets who come to our conference and that ends up dividing the team. Um, also, I'm doing the poetry critique in the last session and there's something that feels redundant about doing an advanced poetry critique seminar and poetry critique at the end of the day. So I'm in the middle of discussing with Dixie how to turn the poetry critique at the end of the day into an, an, a, a seminar slash critique session that is both instructional and critique um, and not teaching in that second session and that therefore not having it be an advanced seminar that requires application and an additional $50 registration. So um, if you could stand by on that, I'm going to be teaching uh, in terms of the seminar aspect of the poetry critique group. I'm going to be using Stephen Dunn, Stephen P.H. Dunn, D-U-N-N. -N. He's got a book called Walking Light that is extraordinary. One of the chapters is called The Good and Not So Good. And he makes distinctions around the good and not so good poem. Why, how do we get our poems to that next level? And, and we're a little allergic about putting words like good and not so good to our writing. But I have to say that this essay has given me language for talking about poetry, making distinctions around why my poems succeed or not succeed. So I want to use that text as the launching pad for conversations about our poems as we write them and revise them. And that, to me, seems like a good marriage with a, with a critique session, how to be talking about poems that way as we're critiquing. So that's what I'm doing. OK. Thanks, Kelly. Hey, Kelly, you want to talk about your course? Uh, yes, I do. I do. Yeah. Um, in fact, Shauna Jackson is on the call, and she actually just asked a question in the Q&A, which, which I did answer for her, and I'll answer again right now. I, again, I'm Kelly Dumar, and I am running for the third year. I've been teaching at the Guild for, this will be my sixth year, but this is the third year of running the Play Lab. And I want to tell you about that. Uh, Linda Bergman is teaching screenwriting. So just to answer uh, Shauna's question about that, because she may have joined the call a little bit late. Um, I'm a playwright as well as a poet. Um, and drama, uh, playwriting, is one of our uh, newer tracks at the Guild Annual Summer Conference. It, and I love it, and I'm just so thrilled to be able to teach playwriting. So what does that involve? What does it include? And this year, for the first time, it's also going to be limited to 12 people. Well, why? Why are we limiting it? Because it's always, you know, been a very um, popular and successful class and process. Well, because it is a play lab. And I think one of the most exciting and unique things about um, deciding that you want to try playwriting or bringing a script that you've been working on is this opportunity to get it on it to get your work on its feet and so on wednesday night during uh, after we've worked together saturday sunday monday tuesday and, and wednesday during the day we have a staged reading of all the works in process that draw in actors and actresses uh, who happen to be attending the conference and you get to hear your script read for all the conference attendees who would like to be there. So we do this in the Red Door Lounge. It's very lively. It's hugely popular. And you're getting to see your work on its feet. Participants are getting to perform. And trust me, we have some superb actors and actresses. Uh, Linda Bergman's husband um, is always on call for so many of the male roles. So. Um, what those 12 participants need is basically, I'm looking for this year a commitment rather than, um, so it, it is best not to, uh, you can always come in and sit in the background and watch what we're doing. I welcome guests, but in terms of the actual participants, we, I want you to have an ability to really focus on developing your script. 
You can start something on the first day of class. I will help you do that. Or you will bring something, maybe a scene, a short piece that you have been working on. And uh, this is both of these things have been done. But the point is you're going to get your 10 minutes in uh, to present your work on Wednesday if you choose to. Of course, that's always optional, but almost everybody ends up choosing to because it's such a remarkable opportunity. So we work, um, that could be a monologue that you're bringing, a stage monologue, and it also could be a scene from a longer work or it could be a 10 minute play. So depending on the exact makeup of what people are bringing to the class, I work with each participant and we work together very much in a play lab kind of format to really nail your dialogue, really nail the sense of theatricality. We look at all, applying all the principles of playwriting craft to your work. But it's really important, I want you to know, if you've never written a play before for the stage and you've always wanted, this is a really safe, supportive environment to have that experience. It's, it's fail-proof. Um, that's one of my core values is risk-taking, is honored. Come and play. Uh, you can't make a mistake. And I really honor the level of risk. And I really think you will see that there are some wonderful ways to begin to apply playwriting craft, not only to writing a play for the stage, but how sharpening the craft of playwriting is gonna impact whether you're writing a novel, a memoir, creative nonfiction or not. So I think I've labbed on a long time, um, but- However, Kelly, yes? I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I thought you were gonna go down a, down a new road and I would love it if you could answer a question that's been arising around Maureen's class too, which is these advanced seminars. Can people apply? They're happy to spend the extra 50. Uh, uh, can they come for only part of the day, the time? And this would, it, your answer may be different than Maureen's, but let's address that because people are entering the call late and they're asking that question. Okay, I'm not exactly sure I understand, Marge, what the question is. And I don't know, does, I'm not sure playwriting is requiring the extra 50 either. So we have to clarify that. I don't remember that piece and it just could be a technicality I'm not aware of. Um, and okay, so the question is, can they come? You need to commit to be there for the week. You may drop in and be a guest and observe what we're doing, but if you want to be in our staged reading, if you want to be one of the people who's going to have a chance to work on your play, whatever that is, a monologue, 10 minute play, scene, you need to be a, a one of those 12 people. Visitors are okay, but 12 people are what, who are going to get to stage their 10 minutes, that's all. And you need to commit to be there for the week. Yeah, and I would say for those who are asking about Maureen's class, <clears throat> it's 12 people. And my guess is that Maureen will get more than 12 applications. The group is going to work better if all 12 people, since they're doing two manuscripts a day, if the group has continuity and completeness for all the days, that's sort of only what's fair for all the attendees, if that makes sense. So my guess is for the people who are coming for the long weekend and want to apply for Maureen's class, please feel free to do so. You won't have to pay the extra 50 until you're accepted. But my guess is that Maureen will, will privilege 12 full conference attendees. And I can't speak for her. But that's what seems fair to me. So again, I'll say it. Do apply if you're not going to attend the whole time but understand that that may be her preference. I just want to say that that applies to my group as well, because if you're going to take the slot, it needs to be, you want to be able to be there for the staged reading. So I am not interested in the idea that only people writing a you know, super duper script should come in or something. It's really not competitive in that nature. I want to work with whatever you bring to this class, because that to me is dynamic. What are you bringing? So it's not like you have to bring a certain thing that I approve of at all. Um, but, I, but we want to privilege the people that are gonna be there they're gonna, that can be part of the staged reading. If you're coming for three days, please feel free to sit in and observe and be part of it. But we'll know that we're not gonna work on your piece. However, is this a good time? Should I talk about the critique group or should I just shut up and we'll come back to it? 
Actually, Kelly, can we come back to it? Because yeah. one of our other teachers has to be somewhere. Absolutely. Fun. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. I look forward to, uh, I'll tell you how you can reach me if you have a question. Thanks, Kelly. Kathleen O'Connor, you're on. Hi, everybody. Thanks for fitting me in, Marge. I have to get off the call in a couple of minutes. I'm very excited to be uh, coming back to, uh, teaching in the fiction arena again. And my class is called How to Write Iconic Characters that Readers, Agents, and Editors Will Love. How I approach this is not just on the paper side. We are going to be doing a lot of writing, but we're also going to be doing what I call character role play. Because as you're writing your characters and you're writing those elements that make them memorable, that give them that charisma so that when the book ends, you want to move into their house and stay with them and see what happens in their lives. You need to hear what they sound like. You need to see whether maybe some of the background that you've put in about how they speak or how they move, how that works in the real world. Because when you create the world of your book, you want the reader to be able to delve into that and find those characters really compelling and believable. So we're gonna do a mix of writing and character role play. And there'll be a lot of laughter because there always is in my classes because I like to keep them fun. We learn a lot, but we enjoy and support each other. So I'm very excited to be coming back and to getting to attend a lot of classes myself. And I'll be doing the fiction critique with Paula. So I'm looking forward to that as well. And uh, my website is KathleenOConnor.com. Thank you, Kathleen. And Thank I would you. love to say that you're a champ because you're, you're standing in for Alice Orr, who isn't going to be attending. And um, that's very cool. So right now, folks, what's true is that Kathleen's blurb and bio is now in the PDF at the website, www.iwg.org slash summer hyphen conference, but it hasn't been changed on the PDF of the daily schedule. Kathleen will be in Alice Orr's slot. I just don't know how to change a PDF. So thanks, Kathleen. You do? <laughs> you do? All yeah. right, I'll talk to you. <laughs> All Thank right. You. Good night, everybody. Good night. In the summer. So, Anya Ochtenberg. Anya Ochtenberg, welcome back. To Hello. Us. I think I can. I think I can uh, get that PDF thing. I have a special um, subscription to something or other that allows me to work with PDFs. So. All right. I'll come so check you out your PDF. Well, no, it's not my P that PDF. We could ch change it. The one I'm you just were. Just I'm just talking, talking sweet nothings to you. I'm so glad you're back. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think this summer? You, you said, well, okay. Um, the thing is called, you know, because you have to name things, otherwise they float around in the ether. Um, beyond mechanical approaches, the essential elements of fiction, custom made for deeper story. So here's the thing. Um, we know how to write story. Everybody tells us how to write story over and over again. They tell us how to write story, except that while we accept organic form and poetry is that's what we do. A lot of people write Sistinas, but most of us write poetry in a organically. And you know, what is it in 1950 something Denise Levertov and those guys um, were writing about organic form and poetry. So I think that, that part of what we end up doing is fighting with this overlay. We got Horace, we got Aristotle, we got Freytag. None of these guys were that great. None of them liked women that much, let alone a whole lot of other people. So we have these ideas about story that this is how we must write them. And if you don't, people say, well, what do you do? Just right. So what this, this, um, this class is going to go through all the elements of story. Um, I, I just did a webinar on narration, but we're going to talk more about narration because it's central and can help you fix things you never imagined could be fixed. Um, we're going to talk about um, every single element of story from setting to character to everything. But we're going to do it in a way that opens it, that, that um, 
really gives a sort of a new look at how it's used. And, and part of it too is that when we think about that organic form and poetry and all of that, and we think about fiction as something very different, part of it is that, how does, that fiction also works by association. Um, and there, in, in, in working with that, I think we're able to arrive at the deeper work, arrive at what might be invisible. And a lot of the work I've been doing, um, I have a website called The Disobedient Writer because I believe firmly in disobedience in terms of writing. Um, but a lot of it also works into um, really arriving at the invisible that's important in looking at social justice issues. So to make a long story short, which is not my strong suit anymore, even though I write poetry, I write short um, nonfiction, but I really have become this novelist. So we are going to um, be looking at, at writers from around the world. We're going to be writing every day. We're going to be doing explorations. And in the critiquing of of, of people's writing, it's not so much to go, yeah, this is good, this is bad, but to work with how um, all of these elements of, of story come together and, and to work with how using these elements in an expanded way can really expand your story. So I think it's going to be useful. I teach story, whether fiction or memoir, and memoirists also need, um, creative nonfiction people need the, the essential elements of fiction to really um, bring forward the stories that are the deepest within them. So I guess, and we'll do a little salsa if, you know, I can't promise chocolate, but maybe a little salsa, so. <laughs> <laughs> By which she means shaking the hips, y'all. Oh, 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 right, yeah. She knows it means shaking the hips. Thank you, Annie Achenberg. Thank you so much. All right, I'm going to meet you, woman. Okay. Linda Leedy Schneider, you ready? I am so ready. Have you got me now? We got you. Good. I can't see myself. Um, I'm just delighted to be here. So happy to see everybody. Um, the Guild is such an important part of my life, but first I guess I'll tell you something about my class. The Art and Craft of Poetry, Come Amaze Yourself. I want everyone to um, increase their own writing style, to write in their own way. This workshop is concerned with process, getting to first thought, connecting with your senses. I write, I'd like you to write in the tradition of Peter Elbow and Natalie Goldberg, which is as hard and as fast as you can not stopping, not crossing out, really getting out of your way so you get to that first thought, which is poetry and it's also good writing. This class is, even though it's about poetry, is open to anybody who wants to come. I began by being a prose writer and then just discovered that poetry was what I, what I wrote. I will flood you with prompts. Um, we'll have something that appeals to each sense each day. I can promise chocolate. I can promise lavender bouquets. And my most exciting, <laughs> actually not the most exciting, but we're going to have peacock feathers this year as a prompt, something to, something to write from. Um, my class is safe and supportive. I only want people to give positive feedback. Um, nobody's going to tell you how to do it better in my class. The main thing I want for people who are in my class is to generate all kinds of writing. So we will write and write, and you'll have lots of things to take home, maybe some finished things, but things that I'm told people want to go back to and finish when they get home. So I want to work on just your voice and helping you to write in the best way possible. Then I want to take one minute to say how much the Guild means to me. It's been, <laughs> I see you bobbing your head, Bart, and I'm more distracted by you. It's been 20 years for me, and the Guild has made such a difference in my life. So I invite anybody who hasn't come to take a risk 
and do what you can to get to this conference. It will change your life. I'm certain of that. It certainly did mine in many ways. Um, so I guess I will just say again, if not now, when, take a risk, try, do your best to come. And I hope that you will be at the conference. And if you're at the conference and if my workshop fits in, I would be, be delighted if you can come. Different every day, you can come um, one day or all the time. And so thank you so much. Thank you, Linda Lady Schneider. Um, what she said is so true, folks. We we uh 41 years we've been doing this conference and there are women who've come every summer for 30 plus years we used to on our opening nights lisa friedman you're next speaking of someone who's been more than 30 years you'll tell us about that uh, we've had generations of women come daughters mothers grandmothers um we've had women from around the globe come and uh, we used to, on our opening nights, have people stand up and do five minute incre increments. And it was really amazing. Uh, it's, it's really a place where we all reconnect once a year. Women save their resources for the year just to do this week because we come back to ourselves. And I'll just say my personal bit, which is that people ask me, hey, do you have a lot of friends? Who are your friends? And I keep thinking like, I don't really have a lot of friends. I call my friends where I live. And then I always go to my IWWG compatriots. You all are my friends. So Lisa Friedman, you're on. Yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. I went to my first guild in 1987 and the people who matter the most in my life are women I met at the guild. It's kind of, mind-boggling. It's hard to express how meaningful it's been. Um, so 1987 was 31 years ago, and I've only missed a few, uh, a few summer conferences over all those years. Um, and I distinctly remember that I taught my first workshop for the Guild in 2004, and it was a workshop about writing illness. And I love that now, 14 years later, I'm kind of coming full circle. You don't have to be writing about illness to come to my workshop, but I'm going to be, um, you know, over those 14 years since 2004, I think what I've been thinking about um, is the way that surviving trauma or getting through any a hard thing um, teaches us lessons and makes us wounded healers. And we certainly live on a, in a time on the planet where the wisdom that we've gained from uh, going through, you know, hard things and trauma is needed, right? So, so I think that I've been um, looking for ways to move from being, uh, you know, a survivor of trauma or a survivor of illness to um, a leader, right? To, to, to accessing some kind of leadership. And I think we can all, you know, I think it's time for us. It's, you know, that famous quote, um, we are the ones we've been waiting for. And so I hope what I want to do in my workshop, I, I'm going to read a little bit because um, I'm really excited and I'm, st I'm, I'm really nervous. I was like, you know, making all these notes all day. And this is kind of a new the thing. One of my favorite things about the Guild is that it is such a um, rich place to take risks in. There's so much um, just being with all these women and writing is uh, just gives you so much courage and, and a sense of safety to take risks. And this workshop feels risky to me. It's a little bit, um, uh, it's a little bit out there. <laughs> um, but the title is Wounded Planet Seeks Wounded Healer. And so it springs from the premise that when we survive trauma, um, we're changed and we learn and we gain compassion. And um, we usually also gain some star scars. I'm sorry, we gain scars. But if we can let those scars and stories they contain um, help others, then that helps us heal and it helps others heal. And um, as wounded healers, we have wisdom that can help our wounded planet, our wounded world. And we need to remember that we in the world are one. Our wounds and our healing are inextricably connected. I'm just going to give you a short quote from Joanna Macy. She says, 
It is my experience that the world itself has a role to play in our liberation. Its very pressures, pains, and risks can wake us up, release us from the bonds of ego, and guide us home to our vast, true nature. So I could, I have, you can see, I have pages and pages I could go on and on, um, but I'll try to cut to the chase. Um, I'm going to do, it's going to, I think I'm teaching at 9 a.m. There's tons of competition, but if this year is like previous years, um, I'll be able to teach outside, which is really great because we begin each session with some meditation. And since this is about, um, you know, healing the world, it's really nice to have some access to nature when we're writing. And um, so we, each time we come together, we'll meditate and then we'll free write. We'll share our free write. And then we'll talk about that day's topic. Um, and I'll, I'll just give you a rundown of what will be, what the topics will be. And I'll have a guided activity to work with a topic. Um, and then at the end of each session, <clears throat> so we will get centered again. And we'll actually um, free write a personal ad each day. Since we're uh, working with being in relationship with the world, I figure why not present ourselves to the world via personal ad? We all know that format. And it's nice and short, so we can actually make one every day and, and just play around with it. Um, and I'll guide you through that. <clears throat> but what that's, um, I love the idea of having a finished product every day. It'll be nice, a nice short finished product. And um, so the first day, we'll work on your profile. Who are you know? What are you bringing to the table? What are you looking for? Um, then we'll also work with the idea of hope. How is it possible to be hopeful now? And we'll be working with shame. The, idea of the scars and how do we kind of bring ourselves and put ourselves out if we have if we carry shame uh given the, the things we've been through and the trauma we've experienced um on day on the fourth day we'll talk about we'll make proposals and think about paths you know what are we proposing to this earth as lover this world as lover what plans do we have and visions do we have and on uh i think other days but on um on Saturday, I'm sorry, uh, when, when we get to the, that, the, that last day, we'll just really be a celebration. We'll have some kind of union ceremony or, or party kind of. So uh, I'm looking forward to it very much. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. My website is lfwritingcoach.com. And um, oh, the one thing I just want to pick up on what Anya said, and um, I'll post this in the Facebook page, but there's a Disobedient Futures um, the Cambridge Writers is doing an anthology on disobedient futures, and I think uh, it'd be really fun if we get the deadline's out until uh, February 14th, 2019, so we have time to get women together this summer to, to submit to that. So, there we go. Thank you so much, Lisa Friedman. So I'm just double checking. Lisa, we have a question from uh, one of our attendees. Do you need to be a trauma survivor to take your workshop? Oh, did I meet myself? No, um, I think you should feel like you've um, been through some tough experience that has taught you something or, or and you can also kind of drop in. But I guess I'm, I am, the idea is that we'll be um, wounded healers. Like, um, so I'm not sure that that requires being a trauma survivor, but it does require having learned from hardship, I'd say. Yeah, good answer, Lisa. If we've been alive, we've probably learned from hardship. Those, everybody I know. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Thanks so much. Yal Flussberg, you're the obvious last uh, among us because you're, te you're teaching what we must start and end our day with, <laughs> correct? W yes, which I actually on this call was thinking that I, I could have titled Move the Mind Out of the Way. <laughs> so every, it's um, instead I'm calling it Pen and Pose. And it's a workshop that really um, integrates two of my two of my longest time loves, right? Yoga and writing. And I find that um, by interspersing the two, by going from say guided visualization to the page to movement to the page to breath work to the page, um, we we get 
to uh, what Myra Shapiro was talking about, really um, embodied poetry and a strong sense of presence. And we get to, I think, dig a little bit deeper into, into what's going on for us in our lives. So um, I'll be, we'll, we'll sort of hang up the theme of the six days. There are five elements in yoga, just like there are five elements in Chinese medicine, and then the sort of supra elements of, uh, of light and sound. So there's earth, water, fire, air and space. Every day we'll look at a different theme. I'll choose both the yogic elements and our, our writing prompts uh, that relate to that and, and also can show us what those elements have to do with the, with the writing life and with the life of a writer. Um, I will also try, if it's possible, to do it outside because I, I also think it's so nice to get that fresh air. And the, my workshop will be at nine o'clock in the morning, so it'll still be, it'll still be cool. Uh, even though Pennsylvania is a little muggy, but we'll be fine in the morning. And um, if you're interested, uh, I'll leave my, my website and you can get in touch with me there at just yaelflesberg.com. Bring a yoga mat or a big towel. Um, come as you are. It's, I, I expect that this will be really a workshop that's, um, that's really good for introverts. We'll be doing some sharing but not a ton first thing in the morning so that you could write, you could write your, your best and your, your worst <laughs> work and it just have it be playful and generative and, and profound. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, Yael Flussberg. All of that info, folks, is in the chat room. I want to thank uh, those of our faculty who are staying on the call to just hang out and show your faces and um, hang out. Kelly, let's move on to critique groups. Um, yeah. What, yeah. I'm not sure I'm loving the title critique groups, but I get what we're doing. So, and I'm doing one of them. So um, let's see, we know, I know we have critique groups in critique sessions in fiction, poetry, nonfiction, and playwriting. And perhaps you and I, for our listeners want to distinguish what does that mean for somebody? Oh, we've got a raised hand. Caridad Pinero has raised her hand. Do you want to check in on what that is? I just moved her to panelist mode so that Caridad can give a blurb about her oh, workshop. Caridad oh. is going to, oh, welcome to yes. Caridad. No, I don't have yes. it met her yet. Fabulous. So, okay. That's, we're so glad she's here. Do you so want to go yeah, then, let's, let's do that. Let's improvise here. Kari Dot, I'm going to invite you to move your cursor around and find your functionality bar so you can click on your video. There's a start video icon. Uh, if, your if your computer does not have a camera or a working camera, we won't see you. Um, there you go. Hi, Kari Dot. Hi. I'm sorry I was on. Uh, I was traveling, so I, I only been listening uh, on the phone, but I was able to enable this in another way. Excellent. So do you want to, we're just, we're just doing it loose and easy. Why don't you tell us what you're teaching this summer? Well, I'm really excited to be with you guys because I have some dear friends that are long time uh, attendees. And uh, this is my first time actually, and I'm honored to be an instructor for the group. Um, I'm actually, um, been published for about close to 20 years in commercial fiction. Um, and that's what I'm going to be talking about. I am everything from um, how you choose a publishing path and create your business plan to, um, you know, the, nut, the nuts and bolts of creating characters, world building, dialogue, um, and also how to protect your work once you've created it. So I'm very excited to share the information that I you know, gotten over the 20 years of being published in commercial fiction. Thank you, Kari Dad. Am I saying your name right? Will you say your name? Yes, yeah. you are. It's Kari, Kari, Dad. Kari Dad. Kari Dad. I got it. Yeah, Kari Dad. Welcome to the Guild. Welcome to our annual summer conference. We love meeting, meeting new folks, having new folks inject our community with 
fresh ideas and fresh faces. Thanks. Well, thank you. I've been really looking forward to it for a very long time. And like I said, I'm so excited to be with you this summer. Thanks so much. Kelly, Jan Phillips just joined us and I'm going to invite her to speak about her course. And Jan, also, if you could do your thing and tell us uh, a little bit more in your role as interim co-executive director. I just unmuted you, Jan. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I'm doing a course that <clears throat> has to do with recognizing that the experiences of our lives have created for us not only our treasure chest of wisdom, but the pivotal adventures about which we write and uh, harvest our experience from. So we're going to have uh, opportunities in my class to reflect back on some of those experiences that we have survived that we at one time called travesties and tragedies and upsets and breakdowns and did a lot of therapy over and harvest them I have some strategies for re-looking at them so that we can uh, figure out what, why did it happen for us as well as happening to us and through us. So it, it'll be uh, quite an empowering week because we start at the beginning and proceed every day. It gets deeper and more revelatory, actually. So it doesn't matter if a person writes poetry or prose or fiction or romance, whatever genre somebody comes in with, the questions are the same. There'll be writing prompts to help us get at the stuff that's really waiting to be storied about. So I have my uh, magic box of tools. And so my commitment is that we will have a magical event over the course of that week. And um, no matter what courses you go to, here's the cool thing about coming to the conference, because there's are there people on this call who aren't teachers who are trying to figure out what, if you know, what's up? Am I talking to people who haven't come yet? Is that the yes, case? both. And also folks who may not be coming this year, but just want to hang out with us and get a sense of what we do, what, what, what they may look forward to in the future. Okay, so what, one thing that I would like to say about the uh, conference week is that I don't know how this happens, but I know that it does happen because I've been attending for about, I don't know, 25 years or more, that it's, it's a special it's a liminal space. It's um, highly intuitive. And so women who come for the first time by osmosis come to an understanding in their own consciousness that they need to select the courses to attend based on their intuition and not based on what anyone tells them or who somebody says is the best teacher there or her appears to be popular. But we really do trust that the classrooms that we enter into, sometimes a great surprise to us, you might end up in a screenwriting class when you thought you were there for poetry, but it's serendipitous and it's magical and it always works. So the only job that we have as attendees, and you know, the teachers teach, but they also attend courses. I go to every course I can go to because they're master teachers. So I don't want to miss one of them. The thing that we need, all of us do is to just trust our intuition, try out new teachers and know this, that if one's not working for you, it's quite fine to get up and try another teacher. So there's a lot of permission there to be exploratory 
and to really trust yourself that, you know, you're investing a lot in this week, not, not just money wise, but time wise and leaving your families behind and all your normalcies behind to jump into the fray of a creative combust, a combustion. So I can promise you that it'll be one of the greatest weeks of your life. I know that to be true. And if, if it's midweek and it's not feeling like that, then you come and tap me on the shoulder and say, we need to have lunch and we'll have lunch and we'll get things straightened out. But really, this is an opportunity unlike anything else. So I just want to congratulate everybody who's already signed up for it for knowing that that was a decision that your body wanted to make and that your body's going to get you there. Your mind might stumble along behind, but what's going to happen is a full on body, mind, soul experience. And that you can take to the bank, as they say. Thank you, Jan Phillips. And speaking of lunch, the food there is quite good, isn't it? Is it not? Yeah, because they won the award, I think, I don't know, Kelly will probably know for sure, but in the top 10 college cafeterias in the country, I think. Yeah, yeah. And so there's a lot of different the states. Award, the award uh, approver. Um, it's, you know, I don't remember exactly about the award, but I know talking to people, and I'm, I'm a fussy kind of eater. I'm, you know, I don't eat meat. I'm a vegetarian who eats a little fish. So there's always something to choose from, and they – they do a good job of, of putting out, you have tons of alternatives. It's not like, oh, you have, you go in and you pick one meal. You go in and you get to, to shop and pick out exactly what you want. Uh, but I, I, I do want to speak, Marge. I mean, it's, it's, there are tables. You never go into this cafeteria without seeing a friendly face. And, and even if you're new to our conference, just walking over to a table with a bunch of people say, hi, and they'll say, come on, sit down. We want right. to get to know you. Here, so, here, yes. This is not elementary school or kindergarten or middle school. This is the Guild. And uh, we are there to make friendships and to get to know each other and to make sure uh, that you're feeling connected and feeling at home and, um, so I have to say that I think our cafeteria is an extremely friendly experience. I second that. As well as good food. Yeah. And, and decent coffee, which makes a big difference for me. It makes That's big right. Good coffee. We, we do want to get on to the uh, critique groups and then maybe just take a minute, Marge. I mean, promise we're not going to forget to remind people about what they want to bring into their dorms because... There's just a few things that are absolutely essential that makes such a big difference to your enjoyment of it. Um, okay, so we have critique sessions in fiction, poetry, nonfiction, and playwriting. And what, did that, what does that mean? That means that when the courses are all done for the day, right? I, am I getting that right, Marge? The, when the courses are done for the day, these are extras. So yeah, let's the, 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 the last time slot of the day is only critique sessions. Yes. So it's not like you have to choose. I want to go to a critique session and you don't need to go to the same critique session every day. And you don't need to, you can go to different ones and you can go to just one while you're there. So let's say you're in Linda Leedy Schneider's class and you wrote a poem and then you worked on it for a couple of days and then you thought, well, I think I'm going to try I've crafted this more. Maybe I'm going to bring it into the poetry group and, and get a little bit more of a deeper um, discussion going on about it. That's an option. Playwriting. So whether or not you're in the playwrights lab with me, I am doing for the first time this year, we added a playwright uh, critique group. So if you've brought, if you're trying to write a monologue or something and you've brought it with you and you're not in the play lab, but you want to get some craft discussion going about your piece, then you'll bring it to my playwriting uh, critique group. Um, we have a nonfiction one and a fiction one as well. What, what can you say about those, Marge? I forget who's doing those. Uh, well, Paula. Yes, madam. Yes, will you speak Hi, about Paula. the critique group? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yes. Um, so the fiction critique, which uh, I believe I'm doing with Kathleen O'Connor, um, who had to leave, but uh, what we'll be doing in there is you can bring your work of fiction. It can be something that's completed or in progress. We'll give you some time to read it, um, read it aloud, and then we'll 
Kath, uh, Kathleen and I will offer feedback on it. What's working, what you might want to improve, how you might improve it. Um, and others in the, in the critique group, if they have something uh, worthwhile to contribute, will also provide feedback. It's a way, sometimes you can't hear your, you, you can't, you can, no matter how many times you read your story, it's hard to get what's happening with it until you hear it read aloud and you have a sense that others are listening to it. And so those two things, both your ability to read it aloud to an audience and our feedback to you provides something for you that you wouldn't get otherwise. You'll have a chance to read a work once and get some feedback and then we make space for others to do the same. Um, Paula, uh, somebody's asking, uh, Deborah Stoughton, hi Deborah on the call, thanks for your question. Um, can you attend a critique group just to listen in and uh, even if you don't want to share a particular piece. Now for playwriting, absolutely, you could. And I'm assuming that, yes, you can show up as a listener. I don't think there's any reason why not to. Uh, I I'm absolutely certain that you can do that. Any reason why somebody couldn't do that in your session? No. No, I don't, ha I don't have a problem with that. Um, it just, uh, just as being aware and be conscious that in being in a critique group, you may make yourself vulnerable. So if you're not going to be sharing in the critique group, honor and respect the space, and, you know, help to hold the space in a respectful way. Um, yeah, Kelly, I'll just add that I think um, I want to change the verbiage. Uh, if you're going to come to critique group uh, um, to participate without having your work critiqued, the other folks in the room, at least in poetry critique, still invite your critique yeah and um right so right. listening and 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 even if you do have your work critique not everyone has to share a critique every time it's it's not like we go down the list and have everyone right speak. it's all yeah. self-agent self -agent. Right. except that and i but i think that what paula is also getting at in marge is also true yes to respect the um the guidelines that your uh facilitator of that group has laid out in terms of how, what's going to be the format of what's what's acceptable feedback or how do you want to do it and every one of us might have different guidelines about what we want to have right. happen in our critique group so and Kelly those guidelines are in the pdf for workshop descriptions at iwwg.org summer slash summer hyphen conference so those are in the workshop descriptions for the critiques folks fyi even how to prep ahead of time even instructions for what to bring to the critique group are in the workshop blurbs PDF at the which, event page. Yeah. I know there's two things that are really essential. We're really, we're coming to the end of our time, believe it or not. Go we ahead. Really. Um, we have to mention our All Voices open mic and also oh, yeah. the book fairs. We have two book fairs. If you are an IWG member, you will have two opportunities to sell your books. It's a huge uh, setup. Everybody's there. It's a lively, uh, really collegial event where you really get to, to buy your friends' books and, and your friends get to buy your books and we have other people coming in. And so the book fairs are fabulous. You just have to be a member to sell. And then the All Voices Open Mic every night. Um, you know, Marge, you're the one who runs our All Voices Open Mic and you create, um, through your guidelines, uh, the really safe space where People come, they don't want to miss it because this is your three minutes as a participant in the conference and our faculty often very much read too. It, it is a communal experience uh, of an open mic that it, it's unmatched anywhere if you've ever been to an open mic. I want to have you say something about it too because it's a very unique, special place. Yeah, I'll say, what, what I'll say is that we do that Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday and Wednesday evenings after dinner. Uh, if people haven't ever shared their work, it's a breakthrough experience for them. Um, I will say this now, and it's a heads up for anyone who's staying on after this webinar to, to stay on for our All Voices Open Mic, continuing from this. Uh, three minutes of your own work. It can be one or two pieces. Whatever fits three minutes includes your introductory remarks. I time you. I give you a one minute warning, uh, meaning that you have one minute left. So at two minutes, I give a harmonica 
And then at three minutes, I, I, I blow on the harmonica twice. You finish the sentence that's in your mouth and you get a ton of applause and love. And um, mostly what people remember is who you were being as you were reading. Um, they don't remember if you got cut off. Everyone's always worried about getting cut off. Never worry about that. Just give us what you got. And um, yeah, I think that our showing up for those open mic readings, even if we're not reading, is such a good thing to be there for each other, to have that auditorium be full. Um, anything else, Kelly? And yes. we can talk about, about that and then we can talk. We're going over a little bit, sorry, but just a little data about how to make your dorm room comfortable and then we'll move on to the open mic. If anyone who didn't tell me by email that you want to read three minutes, it's open to everyone, whether you're a member or non-member, just for tonight or whatever time zone you're in and just let me know in the chat room. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, so how to make yourself comfortable in the dorm room. Um, <clears throat> we're provided with a, a little towel and basic bedding. So um, what you're going to find the best things about the dorm rooms is just being with friends and the bathrooms are fine. Look, it's nothing fancy, but you don't care because you're, you're hardly in your room. You're, you're spending time with other people. You've got a desk and you've got your bed and, you know, so, but bring, um, bring a lamp, a little bedside lamp. Because then you can turn off your fluorescent lights and have your little bedside lamp. Um, and if you have a friend who's driving like me, ask me. I'll, I'll drive you a little extra lamp or something, you know. Put it in my car so you don't have to carry it on your, um, on your uh, flight. Um, bring an extra blanket. Bring your own pillow. Bring a couple of extra towels. Bring a yoga mat. The extra towels are so that, you know, you can really cover your whole body with a towel if you want. <laughs> and um, a face cloth and a couple of things like that. What am I forgetting about the dorm room that is well, so essential? Well, Kelly, actually, um, I, uh, I wanted to tell folks that um, all the information that we're giving you now, what to bring, suggestions for what to bring, how we're running the book fairs, the All Voices Open Mic, that'll all be in your welcome letter. If you register, you'll be getting a welcome letter from Dixie King, our conference coordinator, eventually. All that will be in there. But to give you a heads up now, Kelly's given you an idea so you're not worried about the discomfort of a dorm room. And uh, we're giving you the heads up about the book fairs. There was a question in the Q&A, Kelly, so I just want to answer it real fast. Elizabeth, which is that, the book fair is our Sunday evening, privileged for the weekenders, and then Thursday evening. And there'll be instructions for if you want to ship your books ahead of time. All of that you'll get well ahead of time so that, that you can do that in the way that best works for you. Um, and I'm showing right now, I'm showing the, the registration page on our, uh, on our website. It tells you kind of everything that you need to know, member rates by day. Maybe you have a friend who lives in Pennsylvania, she wants to come just for the day. Uh, travel, scholarship, oh, sorry, the scholarships are passed. Um, so everything here on our website. And Kelly, the only thing that's missing at this point is a rideshare board. So please be patient around that. Okay. Stop share. Okay. Uh, I think we have had a, a fabulous, I, I'm so grateful to the faculty, uh, for all of you instructors, friends, leaders, who came on the call um, just to really help share the beauty, the uniqueness, the depth of our incredible summer conference experience for those who might want to join us, if not this year, sometime soon, I hope. Um, Marge, thanks for coordinating the call so effectively, as always. Um, we're so grateful to have you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, do our teachers want to unmute yourselves and give a big chorus of goodbyes? Yes. <laughs> that sounded so wimpy. Oh, I want to say hello to everybody. I want to send massive oops hugs and, and thank you, Marge, always. And Kelly, thank you so much. And I can't wait to see you guys in the flesh. <laughs> so. Yeah, big hugs.
Big hugs, Wayne, when we get there. I'm hanging Bye. up with the open mic. <sighs> I wish I could. I'm going to work. Myra, thank you. Uh, I didn't expect to see you tonight, and I, I'm just overjoyed to see oh. your face. Mm -hmm. Kelly, Kelly, good. And I, you. All thank of you. Lisa. Yes, there you are. <laughs> it's wonderful to be together and to soon. Two months, not even. <laughs> yeah, two months. Thanks, Myra. Folks, if you're trying to leave the meeting, um, teachers, you got to click leave meeting. If okay. I end the meeting, we'll all disappear. Bottom right-hand corner. Um, yeah. I want to thank everybody who came and, and was our audience for this call. Thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you this summer. Bye, Kelly. Bye, Marge. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. 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 Yeah. It was fun. Bye, everybody. Those of you who are staying on for the open mic, stand by. So Lisa, Myra, and Linda, do you not want to leave us? <laughs> I, gotta, <laughs> I want to hear the open mic. I got a guild fix. I can't oh, get enough now. You do? So yeah. Lisa, I'm going to move you into, you're so great. I'm going to move you into pan, in attendee mode so that okay. whoever's reading is the only one visible. But um, okay. bye bye. It's not uh, like moving into the kids' table. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mar, Mar, yes. are yes. there questions that we need to answer? Otherwise, if... if no, you know, actually, we've answered them all, Myra. We're good to go. Oh, okay. And yeah. so, yes, yes, okay. So anyone who stays on, yes, I hope to see you this summer. Yeah, thanks, Myra. Do you see the leave meeting? Um, what? Yes, and I'm going you to see that. Myra, okay. thanks for thanks for doing this. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. <laughs>
Um, I, I wrote this uh, April uh, poem-a-thon. I had to write a poem every day, which I've never done in my life. So I'm just taking two poems from that. The first one is to pick something you're afraid of and not tell them what it is. The unexpected. They are alive and moving quickly and in different directions. They are hidden or they come out when you least expect them. Let's run into the woods and see what we can see. Let's play near the river and go rock climbing. It might move and we may see it. It might stay still and we can miss walking on it. Nothing wrong with my eyes, they see very well. What a trip when we walk in the woods. What a trip when we sit on the grass. Hot weather is eventful in the desert sands. No time for thinking about what we worry about. No time to say, I'm not going in there. The fear can be overcome. Some love to hold them and pet them. Not me, they're not in my realm of fun. The next one is about looking through a window and I was at to my daughter's, so this is from her house. Time together, the cars go by next to the house. Different sizes, different shapes, busy but serene. Working on the yard and landscape. Takes me back to other places I have been, relating to a job and people who have left in memory. Then I return to where I am. Family, good times and smiles. Being together for dinners and conversation, granddaughters cheering us with her smile, so full of life and love, this window is in a place we visit. It has a new meaning, new thoughts of the future, possible dreams that may come true, possible changes and adventures. That's what I have. Thank you, Susan Jesdal Hagen. You're welcome. Um, Susan, so I'm going to remind you and everyone else that after you read, and I move you back to attendee mode, check the chat room because that's where folks will be giving you praise and telling you what lines stood out. And I'll invite you uh, who are listening that you can use the chat room that way. Just make sure that you choose all panelists and attendees uh, in the drop down menu for the TO, the two colon, choose all panelists and attendees. Unless you wanna just talk to Susan privately, you can also choose her name in the drop down menu. Uh, once I move her to uh, back to attending mode. Thanks so much, Susan. Thank you. Okay. Emmeline Poet, I'm going to move you to panelist mode and then we'll make sure that your um, audio and video are working. It always takes a second. You got, when I move you, you go into the, a black hole somewhere. Em, huh. Emmeline, I just unmuted you. Here you are. Start your video, find the functionality bar somewhere, move your cursor around and you'll see a start video if your computer has a camera. Emmeline, let's see if we can at least hear you. Mm, I've unmuted you, Emmeline, so we should be able to hear you if your microphone is working. You may have to mess around with your audio options. Emily, we can't hear you. Okay, Emily, I'm gonna move you back to attendee and I'll come back to you. See if you can figure that out. Uh, folks who are gonna be reading, you have audio options at the microphone. Again, on that functionality bar, there's a little arrow. If you click on that, you'll find audio options. I don't know if it's the Zoom audio or your own computer's audio. You may have to play with the mic on your computer itself. There's two ways that, and I just don't understand it enough. I just know that I mess around with it and finally figure it, figure it out. So you just, you just muted yourself, Emily, and I'm gonna move you to panelists, uh, back to attendee and, and see what you can do and I'll come back to you. Esther Oyolo, I'm going to move you to panelist mode. Hi, Esther. I'm going to unmute you. Let's see if we can. Can we hear you, Esther? 
Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Yes. And do you want to see if your uh, does your cam your your laptop or your computer have a camera? You can um, click start video if you want to be seen. You can click start video. Otherwise, there you are. Hi. Yeah, I can see. Hi, how are you? Tell us where you're logging in from. Um, uh, right now I'm in Beirut. Welcome. But I come from Kenya. From Kenya. Wow. You were concerned about the connection, yes. but you sound and look good. Yes. So I'm going to mute myself and take my face off the screen and you're, you're on. This is Esther Ayolo. Am I saying your name correctly? Yeah, this is Esther Yolo, a member of uh, of uh, the International Women's Writing Guild from Kenya. Mine is about she. She is fearful, afraid, not sure of herself. One step, she retracts. She lacks confidence, hope, zeal. She's afraid, shy. She has no voice no sight, no strength. She, she has potential. She's frail, weak, feeble, gone, covered by the mountains. She's crying, sobbing, screaming, silence. Oh yes, she is. She's trembling, shivering, cold, pale. Do you remember her? She has no strength. No zeal, no dream. Renewed strength, zeal, and dream. She's frail, weak, feeble, gone, as the waters cover the sea. She's the beauty, the joy. She's proud. She's the sun and moonlight. She's eloquent, brisk, courageous, but low. She's the star and daylight. She has no limbs. No senses, no hope. She's undeterred. She's frail, weak, feeble, gone, lost in the clouds. She holds her head high. She's eager as she sows. She commands the day, she commands the night. She has no regrets, no apologies. She's not turning back. She's frail, weak, feeble, gone, gone to the grave. She has no voice, no sight, no strength. She, she has no strength, no zeal, no dream. She has no limbs, no senses, no hope. She is a woman. Her voice is her pen. Her sight is her book. She's a woman. Yes, she is. Her strength is her story. She, she is in the clouds. Her limbs are her sisters. Her senses are her sisters. She is in the waters. Her hope is her sister. Do you know her? She is a woman. Oh, Esther, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Did you realize, Esther, that when we do our open mics, I move everyone to panelist mode so everyone can hear each other applaud. And otherwise, you're speaking into a vacuum. So I'm going to applaud because I forgot to move everyone over. And yeah. thanks so much for joining us. Um, thank you so much. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome. I'll move you back to attendee mode. Susan Hagen, I apologize. I didn't even get to applaud for you, but I'm fun for you now. Mary Lou Strezneski, I'm going to move you over. Let's see if we got some good audio video here. Oh, Sandra Becker, I accidentally moved you over. My bad. Sorry about that. All right, Mary Lou. Mary Lou, hello. I'm going to unmute you. And if you want to start your video on the functionality bar, you can. Uh, functionality bar just disappeared. Uh, where are we? Share screen. 
start video. There you go. That's it. And Mary Lou, move your screen so that we can see all of your face. <laughs> there you go. Hey. We get to see your office. My, my camera is not behaving. Oh, okay. There yeah. you go. You ready to go, Mary Lou Strasnowski? Yeah, it'll have to do. It's, it's doing time. all right. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to disappear, okay? Yeah, can you make a bigger picture? Well, here's the deal, and I will explain this so everyone can understand. The reason why when I speak you can see me in the center is because I have spotlight video functionality activated, which I thought was a default functionality. So, for you to be spotlight, can you go to your video icon? And do you have an arrow like a V, upside down V? Yep. Click on the, that V and go to video settings. Okay. Oh. And, and okay. you see it says my video with some options, then meetings with options. Yeah. Click on the last option for meetings. It says spotlight my video when I speak. Okay. Okay. I just did that. All right. See, now you're, there you go. Yeah, I should be. Okay. Um, Mary Lou Strzeznevsky, everybody. Oh, it just went away. Yeah. All right. We're fine. Yeah. Whoever's speaking shows up in the center, Mary Lou. Yeah. Okay. All right. There we go. Um, sure. I'm doing, now it disappeared. Are you there? It'll okay. disappear if you're not speaking. Oh, okay. So I'll keep speaking. Yeah. Um, yeah. I am going to be doing um, a offering, making a, a Monday night offering at the conference. Um, I'm calling it a uh, convocation of crones. Uh, crone being a very honorable term. Uh, we haven't had a, a, a croning in, in a number of years when people came to be crones, but uh, we have some wonderful people who are proud to be called. It's very ancient um, classification. We go maiden, matron, crone in the life cycles of a woman. Um, and I have wondered for many years about what the people in nursing homes think about all day. Uh, it can't be sitting in a nursing home. The result um, was something called parallel universe. The Blakely Pine Nursing Home, Peckville, Pennsylvania. This twilight world has many windows. Sunshine illuminates the valley view, but cannot enter the dimmed corridors of neurons where the dead loved ones walk. A skinny girl follows her mother, dropping blackberries into a shiny metal bucket. Resting under a shady tree, she leans against her mother's breast. A boy in rumpled socks and knickers scrambles up the heaps of waste the mine casts off, picking coal, adding warmth to his mother's winter stove. Miners still trudge up the hill each dusk with pick and lunch tin, dirty faces, white circled eyes. They scrub in cellars, smile gently at their children, drink to ease the aches. Flapper music tinkles past graceful dresses, bobbed hair, straw boaters, open cars on an unpaved street. The skinny girl sparkles as a woman. Old apple tree still shades the yard. Gracefully framed in a portrait, youngest daughter's almond eyes still beckon the suitors who never came. Rocking on her porch, an old country matron sits in house dress and sturdy shoes, waiting the return of her baby with his purple heart from Anzio. The house is for sale. In silenced rooms, the coal dust waits, fine and black, sifting into the eyes of granddaughters come to carry away the hope chest, the wedding veil, family portrait faded to sepia. They believe the dead are gone. But here among the wheelchairs and the walkers, an apple tree stands past empty gums and vacant smiles, clouded eyes and clouded minds, miners still trudge toward home. And here in the sunshine, beside the windows with the valley view, a skinny little girl 
is picking berries. Wow, thanks, Mary Lou Strzeznewski. And You're thanks welcome. for telling us about your Crone event on Monday, which you'll repeat yeah, uh, at the summer conference. Fired, so people will know about it. Excellent. You look good, Mary Lou. Thank you, dear. I keep trying. Yeah. You look Rush good. fingers. Hey, I didn't clap for you, Mary Lou. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, dear. Check the chat room for any, any praise from, from your co-attendees, okay? I will do that. Okay. All right, Katerina Conan, I saw you get on the call and I put a question in the chat room if you wanted to read. So let me know in the chat room. I'm gonna check in with you, Emmeline Poet. Let's see if your mic can work this time. Thanks for your patience, everyone. This uh, technology is new for all of us. And it's extraordinary that we can do this, that we can hear each other across the miles. So I'm gonna unmute you, Emmeline, and I wanna, I just hope we can hear you, even if we can't see you. Uh, it's not letting, okay, there you go. Emmeline, I think I heard you call. Yeah. Oh, we can hear you. Fantastic. Do you want to try to start your video to see if we can see you? It, it doesn't work. Okay, good. I'm going to introduce yeah. you, Emmeline Poet, and I'm going to, I'm going to mute myself and get off the screen, okay? You're on, Emmeline. Okay, thanks. I am Emmeline. I am a poet and I live in Nairobi, Kenya. And I wish to share something I've been working on, mostly about babies of late, about babies. And here I go. I look at the baby. She's so peaceful, so happy. And she's in bliss. And I wish I was young again. I wish I was a baby again and experience the sheer bliss. No worries. Thanks. I look at the baby. She is happy and suckling at her mother's breast. And her mother's breast is everything to her. At the breast, all her needs are catered for. And I look at the baby and think of the many things we want. We never get satisfied. We are forever on a rat race. And the baby is satisfied with everything in the world when it is circling. I look at the baby and I am happy. The baby fills me with a happiness and a joy because the baby is teaching me how to live a simple life and how to be grateful and how to be satisfied. No worries, peaceful, blissful, happy, and at peace. I look at the baby, Oh gosh, look at her. Thank you. Thank you, Emmeline. That was Emmeline Poet. Emmeline, uh, you're a new member of the Guild and I've been noticing yes. that you participate a lot in the IWWG members room. You email me a lot. Yes. I really appreciate you're joining us today. Yes. I don't know what time it is, Tell us where you're logging it's in from and what time it is. Three hours past midnight and three hours to morning. So what country are you in? Kenya. In Kenya. So Kenya. right now, is it is it 4 a.m. there? Three hours past midnight. Oh, did you say? Three hours past midnight. Gotcha. Okay, it's a little and hard three to hours past Got it. All right. Thanks for getting yeah. up early or staying up late to join us. That was beautiful to hear your Thank words. You. Beautiful. 
Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. All right, I'm going to move you back to attending mode, Emmeline, and then I hope you go to bed. Katerina Conan, thanks for wanting to read. I'm going to move you to attending uh, to panelist mode. Katerina, unmute yourself and start your video. And Katerina, you came on late, so notice I forgot to get all the readers in the room. My bad. So you're just getting my applause, but still check the chat room. Okay. You oh. ready to go? Okay. Um, yes. This is Katerina Conan. I'm reading a um, short poem that I wrote in June Gould's online webinar um, that um, ran for the past month. The poem is called Happiness. Best kept boxed, lid on tight, caution growing round it like a strangler vine. Can't last is carved onto the razor blade deep in the apple. Nibble at sweetness and you'll bleed, frayed lipped. Bite down hard and you'll swallow your tongue, vomit up your blood. Nail down the lid and you will fade into a ghost pale-cheeked, toothless, scurvied. Thanks. Thank you, Katerina. Did you want to read anything else? No, I think I'm good. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> that was the one you sent that I was able to read. Yes. Yes. It was nice to hear it. Yeah. Thanks, Katerina Conan. Uh, Anybody else want to read who hasn't read? Those of you who are still attending, thanks for staying on with us. Last call to share your all. How's that? Let me know in the chat room. Otherwise, I'm going to move Katerina to attending mode and do it real slowly so you have time to let me know. All right, everybody, thanks so much for joining us for this month's All Voices Open Mic. It's really good to know that someone's listening. Katerina, I'm not going to end the meeting till you see the praise for you in the chat room, so be sure to check that. Thanks, Martha Pedersen, for staying on. Marilyn Hazelton, Lisa Friedman, Gary Bahugna. Bahugna. I can't say your last name, Gary, but I, that was a... That's a beautiful name. Gauri Bohugana, Katerina Conan, B. Blazer or Blozer B. Sorry if I've mispronounced your name. Good to have you guys with us. And I'm going to say good night or good day. For future reference, good question, B. Does the video icon appear only when you open it for us? I don't see it on my screen. Mm, oh, uh, I don't know, B, depending on the device you access on, the functionality icons are different. The arrows, the drop down menus, I, I don't know. Um, glad you're here too, Susan Hagen. I'm glad I pronounced your name right, Gowrie. Um, B, if you plan to attend more of our events, you could email me at iwwgquestions at iwwg.org and I could set up a practice session with you on Zoom so we can figure it out through your device, okay? iwwgquestions at iwwg.org. Katerina, you're still getting praise, woman, from Lisa Friedman and others. Good night, good day, wherever you're logging in from. Wow, more messages. Okay. All right, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Katerina, I hope you're seeing your praise. If not, I'll send you the chat room. All right, everybody. Good night. Thanks for joining.